This is a four star alignment after flipping the scope back and forth between the eastern and western parts of the sky using the moon and planets Jupiter and Saturn making various adjustments including a slight tilt to the azimuth it was off to the north a little bit and four star alignment is giving parameters that are all pretty close less than 2000 which in my estimation is a good place to start especially if I get the same kind of values to the west as I am now getting to the east. Okay, I've just flipped the scope over to the west, and this is a view of the moon in the field of view. It's slightly off, probably about 10 or 15 arc minutes from missing the center along the north-south axis. Now I'm going to do an alignment with Zarak, which I just did as my fourth star, to the east. Okay, and here, after exhaustive mechanical work aligning everything up on the azimuth and a declination, are the values for four star alignment to the west, also all below 2000. So I suspect these values look pretty good. I believe they're in arc seconds, which is considerable number of arc minutes at 60 arc seconds. But they could also be an encoder count, so I can't be sure about it. But I'm going to go ahead and make a swing on the moon. Now remember, anything planetary is in motion, and it's calculated mathematically based on orbital data. There's no guarantees. You never do a, a star alignment or a mount alignment to planets and the moon for that reason, because they're only approximations of locations. But if the moon centers up pretty good, I'll have that for future reference. And here's our view of the moon, and this is not bad at all. The center of the moon is right down about here. The center here, so it looks about two fingers off, which I would say about six arc minutes. I am very satisfied with that. Let's go take a look at Jupiter if, if it's not too far progressed to the west. Jupiter has progressed. Look how very little of the aperture is actually being able to detect it. But here's our view of Jupiter. It also is displaced slightly from the center of the field, but more in this direction, which Frankly, I'm not sure what direction that is because everything can be inverted and gets quite confusing. But I'm very pleased with the results. I like the model parameters. They should get much better centering. I'm going to revisit some of the galaxies from last night. I'm also going to turn off color to see if that's an issue and turn on uh, the infrared optimization again. See if we get a better view of galaxies. Of course, the moon's a little brighter and it's going to be closer to the part of the sky I'll be uh, videoing tonight, but I do want to check it out. But the sky is the equal to what it was yesterday. Very transparent. Haven't seen any. Haven't seen any chemtrails or jet trails. Quite pleased. Feeling confident. Mechanic adjust mechanical adjustments rule. Okay, after having relatively perfected the star alignments to east and west and adjusting both the azimuth and the declination, this is what things look like. I've created an R, a zenith position, which is a set home position for the Lozman D mount. Put the bubble level in the middle in terms of the declination position. And in terms of right ascension, I have a manual bubble level that I put on here, and this is the bubble level also centered. Let's take a look at what similar bubbles look like when we park it at the built-in zenith position for, this, for the mount. Okay, there's also a built-in zenith point park position. This is the bubble level. It's, the scope is tilting a little bit to the north right now, but I don't know whether that's an optical or mechanical alignment with the cradle and the mount scope itself, or whether it has to do with the mount. And here's the position where also Tilt a little higher. In other words, the scope is tilting towards the east slightly based on this bubble level that I've, that I've manually installed on the um, right ascension axis. So now we'll go to the clock counterweight down position. Here's our, our, our clock our counterweight down position. The bubble is slightly off to the right, which means the mount is tilted a little to the east. And the associated bubble level I like to put on this position here is also a little tilted in the opposite direction, which is kind of intriguing. So there's a little bit of offset going on in the mount. 
but I'm not going to play with it because the numbers look pretty good for tonight and I sure hope I can actually turn up the galaxies. One of the other things I'll do tonight is also turn off color to see if that makes a difference in um, being able to get to the deep south on some of those 13th and 14th magnitude galaxies that I had previously posted up on Golden Phoenix Publish today from last night. Here we go. But finally, there's the position of Zarek after I've resynchronized the mount. I'm going to let it sit this way until it gets dark. Hopefully it'll track pretty close to being in the middle of the screen over the next 45 minutes or so that I'll be indoors. Ah, today is Saturday, February 25th. It's about 7 o'clock in the evening. Moon still got a little crescent quality to it. And if you can see over there, Jupiter and Venus, Venus the much brighter, are getting very close to some kind of an alignment, probably within about five degrees of each other. Goal for tonight is to recap the imaging that I did last night, this time in black and white using IR optimization and having spent a considerable amount of time tightening up the align go-to alignment of the scope because I was it was very obscure last night hard to tell if we were actually finding the galaxies we wanted to find and uh, that may be attributed to having left the scope in color mode as well as being misaligned. Right now the scope has been tracking Zarak. Uh, constellation, I think it's an Eridanus. Anyway, for about 30 minutes it has drifted about five or six arc minutes off to the right, which indicates there's probably some value that's wrong in terms of how quickly the scope is supposed to turn. Periodic error is what you might call it. I'm not going to play with that as long as everything is pretty tight this evening. So, we're going to recap the observations of the previous night. Sky Dark will be upon us probably in the next 15 minutes, and we'll go from there after I synchronize to Zarak. <laughs>